Hi, it's Elaine from Penguin Place Crafts. It's been a couple days. Yeah, I, uh, I sort of lost enthusiasm for crocheting for a day or two, and it was busy and just dreary weather. Just foggy, rainy, cold, and it's just, okay, I'm going to take a little break. I did finish up a couple of things, but I'm going to hold off on those to a video tomorrow or the next day because today is the yarn tour. I have been knitting and crocheting for about 50 years. I learned in sixth grade by my calculations that would have been 1973 in 4-H program. My best friend's mother taught me both to knit and crochet. I do have, I did have a grandma, my grandmother on my father's side, who loved to crochet. She made us all Afghans as teenagers. Um, but she didn't teach me. She probably gave me yarn after I learned, but I learned from 4-H. So when I was growing up, we liked to go to flea markets and garage sales. And we liked to pick stuff up when it was a bargain. So, over the years, got a little yarn here and a little yarn there. There used to be a store in the, the western New York area called VIP Yarns. Any of you who are from western New York, it was in the plaza next to Eastern Hills Mall. Just tucked away in this little nook. And we would go out there because they had bargain bags. Yeah, we liked bargains. And these things would be huge. They'd be like the size of a 13-gallon tall kitchen garbage bag. Clear plastic. Um, I think it was pretty much all acrylic yarn. You know, thinking back like 45, 50 years, I'm, you know, the memory may be a bit foggy. And it would be like they just tossed in bits and pieces of this and that. And it was a tangled mess. It would usually take several hours to untangle a bag, but it was only like $9.99 and you got this huge bag of yarn. So it was a bargain, so we'd get those. Um, garage sales, flea markets. Once my father retired, he would go down to Florida and they'd go down to Florida for the winter. And when they'd come back, my mom would go, oh, I got a bunch of yarn for you. Okay. So a little bit of yarn followed me to college in my apartment for the year after college. Then I moved back home where there's yarn all over the place. And when I got married, my mother would always be, or my parents would be, hey, we found some more yarn for you. And they'd just bring it like a tote of yarn. So I ended up with all these totes. Um, in 2013, I decided to get it organized. Was it 2013? Let's see. I have my notes here and I'm not following them. So I brought up 2013. How old would my kids be? 15, 20. Okay. <coughs> so at that point, the two older girls were out of the house. It was just um, the youngest left at home. So we did have a spare room. I brought up all nine totes from the basement and pretty much just dumped them on the floor of the spare room and then started sorting them back out. Okay, there's a, there's a tote for white. Here's a tote for red. Here's a tote for pink. Here's a tote for variegated. I think it took me over a week to get it done. Got it done. Nine totes down the basement. Um, now they're at 13, they've grown, they multiplied. So there's brown and cotton, white, red, black and blue, light blue, variegated, novelty, new acquisitions, lime, purple, 
be three more here. There's a pink, purple, gray. Hmm. I must have missed some when I was counting. But all of the yarn in those totes, those totes, is inventoried into Ravelry. So if I'm looking like the blue yarn, I can go to my Ravelry stash and say blue. It'll show me all the blue yarn. And then I could filter it by yarn weight or um, fiber content, stuff like that. But usually that's enough to help me find where it is. You know, it'll tell me like UB knee or Krupski or Mori. Okay, because besides those totes down in the basement, there are two totes and four or five boxes in the bedroom. Let's see. Did I have a list of that? Nope. Let's see. Oh, it's back. It's front and back. My script. No wonder I was thought I was missing something. Okay. In the closet in there, there's the mint tote. There's the Mori tote. There's HP from an old HP printer. There's blue lid. It's from a box of copy paper that has blue lid. There's green lid. Different brand, different color lid. And Krupski. Krupski. Our last name is O. Krupski. But every year we get a lamb from a local farmer and have to pick it up from the meat processor. The lady working at the meat processor misspelled our name on the box. Instead of writing O. Kupski, she wrote Krupski. And I reused the box for yarn. So now whenever I go in and I get yarn from that box, the song from West Side Story, Officer Krupki gets stuck in my head for a couple of days. So, Maury? Why Maury? Okay, there are also one, two, three, four, five, six. Six underbed storage containers. They're all over the place. Um, actually, one of them is in the closet because when we got rid of the bed in this room and turned this into a craft room, we no longer had enough bed space for all of the underbed storage containers. So I really do need to get one emptied out and see if one of my girls could use an underbed storage container because it doesn't work well just sitting on top of everything else. Okay, and then there's zipper. There is an old bag from a king size comforter that is out in the front closet. And that's got just a little bit of everything. Here's a picture of some of the stuff that's in there from Ravelry. It's just, okay, there's no room in these other totes. Let's put it in zipper. Well, then we've got the shelves back here. We've got the shelves with the purchase from Michaels and my recent purchase from Goodwill is over here until I can get that sorted into the totes. Um, I was going to say something about the Ravelry. Um, like in the different totes down there, there is a tote that's labeled white. Okay, if I'm just looking for white yarn, sometimes I go directly to the tote, look through, okay, I want this bright white, not that off-white. But because of times when I was sorting yarn out, didn't quite have room in one tote for it. Oh, there wasn't room in brown. So this is a picture of the white tote, according to Ravelry. You got that brown yarn in there. It didn't fit in the brown tote. And there's that novelty red yarn. I just needed a place to put it. So I put it in white. So it's good that I have my everything in Ravelry. So I don't spend hours and hours like, where did I put that pink yarn? I can look it up on Ravelry and find it. Find out exactly where it is because I have the location on each listing. So sometimes it's something like UB knee. Well, UB knee is the storage container under the bed that is at around knee 
level. There's UB head, UB chest, UB knee, UB toe. Um, the stash keeps growing. I have had, I believe, six different people give me yarn, either because they were moving. I'm a church secretary, and when our knitting pastor moved from New York to Michigan, he gave me like four boxes of yarn. Um, there was a woman at church whose sister, she was helping her sister clean out her house, and she gave me a trunk full of yarn on two occasions. Um, there are a couple instances where a family member passed away, the family's cleaning up grandma's yarn stash, and I got a bunch of it. And I have been to a couple of garage sales where they were cleaning out a lifelong crafter's yarn. And, you know, that's an occasion where I'd buy 30, 40 skeins of yarn at a time. Then there's my thrift store purchases and Hobby Lobby purchases, and today I redeemed gift card, no, credit card reward points. So I have a $50 gift certificate, the gift card to Michael's coming my way. That'll go a long way buying clearance yarn. So that's why I keep saying I need to shop my stash. Before I go yarn shopping, I need to use up what I have here. And I do go through a lot of yarn. I mean, I kept track one one month of yarn, and I went through six and a half pounds of yarn in that month. So I know that would vary by months, whether I'm making big stuff or little stuff, complicated projects or quick projects, double weight worsted, or just thinner yarn. You know, it, it would vary. But I do use it. It's not like it's all just sitting there, you know, unloved. <laughs> but um, I do need to thin it out a bit. I am trying to do more of shopping through my stash. And then this morning, I get a message from a local woman saying that her cousin got two big bags of yarn from a well-to-do woman who liked to buy expensive yarn, but now she's decided that she doesn't want to knit or crochet anymore. And would I like some free yarn? Cue the Jeopardy theme? No, you don't need to cue the Jeopardy theme. I answered yes immediately. You know, the, the whole thing of high-end expensive yarns, it may not be my cup of tea, but with doing the mystery yarn challenge, I could send some really nice yarn to the person whose name I get. And then I don't mind if I get worsted weight yarn, like Red Heart Super Saver back. You know, I could do some yarn swaps. Like, hey, anybody who wants me to load up this box, like a priority mailbox with expensive, high-end yarns and send me the same size box back filled with Red Heart Super Saver and they don't even have to be full skeins? I'm all for that. That'd be great. That'd be fun. So we shall see. She's supposed to bring it over Saturday afternoon and she's insistent. Oh, these are big bags. She's going to have her son carry them in for me. So there will be a yarn gift unbagging on Saturday and I did move things around in here just to sort of open things up and make a little bit more room for for get, getting around <laughs> not enough room for two humongous bar bags of yarn but we'll work around it so I'm gonna be editing in all sorts of pictures to show you various things about my yarn stash um, if you're not familiar with the Ravelry stash feature and want me to do just a specific video on that, how it works and what you can do with it, I mean, it's, it's, it's cool. 
you can have all your yarn in there and you can have it displayed by color, by yard weight, by most yardage, least yardage. So if you're like, oh, I need a lot of yarn for this project. What do I have a lot of? Sort it that way and all of your larger lots of yarn will come up on top. So if you're not familiar with Ravelry Stash and would like me to try to put together a video showing how I use mine and the features it has, I probably don't use all of them. I could do that. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go make dinner. Tonight is um, Salisbury steak, noodles, and corn. So pretty quick. And then once the dishes are done, I get to play with yarn. Bye bye. And oh, I need to take my ring light out. See if my husband can fix it because of all the moving around. It got bumped around so much my ring light's not working. I like my ring light. I want my ring light to work. Bye-bye.